Welcome to St. Joe First United Methodist Church, and thank you for choosing to join us today. My name is Judy Thompson, and I'm your worship greeter today. I have a scripture for you. It's Psalm 25, verses 4 and 5. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Our first hymn this morning is Come Christians, Join to Sing. Page 158, we'll be singing verses 1 through 3. Please stand if you're willing and able. Uh, share with an affirmation of faith uh, on page 882, the Apostles' Creed, Ecumenical Version. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Well, good morning, everybody. I am Pastor Dan, and I am glad to, that you have chosen to worship with us today. If you're worshiping in person or if you're worshiping online, thank you for choosing to worship with us today. And I pray that um, as we worship together, that we all draw closer to Jesus Christ and that we draw closer to each other 
And that we leave this place filled with the Holy Spirit, ready to live that Christian life that God has called us to live. At this time, we have some video announcements for you. So sit back and, and enjoy the video uh, and uh, get involved in the ministries and missions that go on here at this church. Um, but at this time, let us watch the, this morning's videos. Good morning, my friends, and we're so glad you've chosen to worship with us today, whether you're here in person or worshiping with us online. We just say welcome and thank you for joining us. I uh, want to remind everybody that if you have new contact information or uh, you're wanting to share your contact information for us for the first time, we do have our connection cards available, both online and the pew in front of you. And if you or someone you know is in need of prayer, we have our prayer cards also available for you in those places. Got a bunch of announcements to share with you this morning, and we want to get those started right away. For all of our middle school through high school friends, we will see you next week. But for all of our pre-K through fifth grade friends, we have Spark this Thursday at 6 p.m. We can't wait to see you guys there. Coming up at the end of the month, we've got something that was originally started as just a kids and youth event, but we decided to open up to the entire church. Around 9 o'clock or duskish, we're going to be doing a drive-in style movie night in the courtyard. Uh, so bring your blankets, bring your lawn chairs, and come enjoy us to watch a really good family-friendly movie. Uh, we don't know what the movie is yet. We'll announce that a little bit closer, too, but we hope you consider joining us for that. Kids Camp is literally this month coming up so soon, July 16th through the 21st. It is going to be an awesome week. Will still needs volunteers for this awesome event. It's going to be great, but we can't do it without you guys. So contact Will if you would like to help out. There are so many different ways and um, areas that you can help in. And if you know anyone that fits the age group for this kids camp, don't forget to register online. Coming up on August 6th, we've got an event coming up. Uh, we are doing a couple's picnic. If you are in a couple and would like to join other couples from the church at Riverview Park at five o'clock on the 6th, uh, the church is gonna be providing the main dish and they invite you to bring a dish to pass. There's gonna be games to play and all of that. So if that sounds like something that's fun for you, we hope to see you there. Thank you so much for everyone who has been coming out and supporting our softball team. It's been so fun to see everyone there cheering us on. We've actually been having a great season so far. So if you'd ever like to come support us, it's every Thursday night. You can contact me for, for more information or there's times on the bulletin board. And also the week of kids camp, we are gonna need some people to sub because there's gonna be a ton of us that are on the team here helping that week. So if you would like to play or sub in that week, you can contact me or Ryan Tucker. Finally, I wanna let you all know to mark your calendars because August 18th through the 20th is family camp up in Pentwater. This is an amazing time to just relax with your church family. I look forward to it every year. Uh, we also like seeing new faces up there all the time. So if you have questions uh, on family camp in general or what it looks like, uh, you can ask me, you can ask Pastor Dan. Uh, we would love to get you that information. We'd love to see you up there with us. That's enough announcements. Now let's continue to worship together. And because you didn't get enough announcements, I'm going to give you a couple more before we go into the pastoral prayer song. Um, there is a box right outside the church office where you can, uh, it'll be there this Sunday and next Sunday. If you would like to share an idea for a name for our church, uh, we would love your suggestions. So if you have some ideas, drop that in the box and we will have a, a committee kind of take all of those into consideration. And so... Uh, just know that that box is there. And I also just want to make a couple corrections that on the church calendar with the worship bulletin that you have, um, the, women's, the Monday night women's Bible study got left off, but that begins uh, tomorrow at 545, and they're going to be studying the bad girls of the Bible. And also, I think the sit and stitch, it says they're sit and stitch this week. That was last week that accidentally got left on the calendar, so... Now let us continue to worship the Lord. We're going to be singing Grace Greater Than Our Sin. Uh, you can follow along with the words on the screen, or if you'd like to follow along in your hymnals, it can be found on page 365. We're going to be singing verses 1 through 4.
Father God, we are grateful for your grace. That grace that is greater than all of our sins. And you offer freely to forgive us and to wash our stains and our sins away. And we are thankful for that, O oh Lord. God, we are human beings. We are flawed. We are born with a sinful nature. We do things that are wrong. We say things that are wrong. We have wrong motives. Forgive us of the wrong things we've done and the bad things we've said and done. Wash us clean in the blood of Jesus Christ. Fill us with your love and your forgiveness and your grace. Give us hope. Put our minds and our hearts at peace. And may we live at peace with you and at peace with one another. And God, we just pray today that you would come and fill this room and our hearts with your Holy Spirit. Speak to us, Holy Spirit. Reveal to us what needs to be changed in our lives. Speak to us your words of truth and love and comfort once again. And may we leave this place closer to you, Lord Jesus, filled with your Holy Spirit, ready to live that genuine Christian life that you want us to. A life of loving God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and loving others as we love ourselves. And God, give us courage to live out the Christian faith. Give us courage to share the gospel message with our family, with our friends, our co-workers, our classmates, and those in our sphere of influence. We want everyone to know Jesus Christ. We want everyone to go to heaven when they pass away and be with you for all eternity. And God, we know that there are people in this church, in this community, and, and, in, and in our world that are struggling. Many are dealing with health issues, and we pray, God, that you would touch them and heal them. And let their health be a living testimony to your power and to your grace. Others are dealing with relationship issues, and others are dealing with financial issues. Be involved in those situations. Lord, we invite you into those situations. And, and may you give wisdom, may you give strength, may you give comfort, whatever is needed to handle those situations. We pray that you would give it. And may your will be done and your way be done in all of them. And God, we pray that you'd be with this church. There are many ministries and missions that go on here. And we pray, God, that you would bless them all. May people in the Bible studies learn your word and grow in their faith and become the men and women of God that you want them to become. May the people that we help at the soup kitchen be, um, come to know Jesus Christ. May, not, may they not only be fed physically, but may they be fed spiritually. May they come to know you as their Lord and Savior if they do not know you. Be with the children's ministries, the teen ministries, the men and women ministries, the adult ministries, the music ministries, the missions that go on here, God. Grow them all. We pray this in your name. And Father God, we thank you today for loving us, for being a loving, good, gracious God. We thank you for giving us your son, Jesus Christ, who came to this world. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. And while he was here, he taught us the ways of God. He showed us a better way to live. And eventually he went to the cross to pay the penalty for our sins. Jesus, we thank you for all of that. We thank you for dying on the cross and rising again victorious from the grave. Conquering sin and death and giving us the ability to conquer sin and death too. And we pray, God, that many people, that everyone would come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And we also thank you, Jesus, for giving us the gift of eternal life and for the gift of prayer. And Jesus, we thank you for teaching your followers how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. 
Amen. Now I invite you to enjoy this special music piece, and I want to thank Karen White once again for playing for us while Jim is gone, and, and we look forward to this special music piece.
Our scripture this morning comes from the book of John, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, and I'll be reading out of the Common English Bible. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the celebration. When the wine ran out, Jesus' mother said to him, They don't have any wine. Jesus replied, Woman, what does that have to do with me? My time hasn't come yet. His mother told the servants, do whatever he tells you. Nearby were six stone stone water jars used for the Jewish cleansing ritual, each able to hold about 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. And they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some from them and take it to the head waiter. And they did. The head waiter tasted the water that had become wine. He didn't know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. The head waiter called the groom and said, everyone serves the good wine first. They bring out the second rate wine only when the guests are drinking freely. You kept the good wine until now. This was the first miraculous sign that Jesus did in Cana of Galilee. He revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. After this, Jesus and his mother, his brothers, and his disciples went down to Capernaum and stayed there for a few days. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Savannah, for that good reading of God's holy word. And we know God's word is holy. It is true. And it can be trusted. Well, today we find ourselves in the, gospel, in the third week, third series. We're in the Gospel of John series, the third week. And if you remember, the very first week we talked about how Jesus is the Word of God who became a human being and dwelt among us. We talked about how Jesus came to bring light to our dark and sinful world. And how he came to offer us new life through faith in Jesus Christ. After exploring these truths, I encourage you to believe the word and to place your faith in Jesus. I encourage you to quit living in darkness and to run to the light. And I encourage all of us to find new and eternal life through Jesus Christ. Then last week, we looked at the life of, and ministry of John the Baptist. We talked about how John the Baptist was obedient to God's call on his life and how he was willing to die for his God and for his calling. And I wrapped up last week's message by talking about how God has called all of us to accomplish certain things for him and for his kingdom. The big big questions that were asked last week were, what is God calling you to do? And are you willing to follow God's calling on your life? Today we're going to continue in the Gospel of John series, and today we'll focus on the very first recorded miracle of Jesus. However, before we go into the details of Jesus' first recorded miracle, let's do a little bit of biblical history. From the last Old Testament prophet Malachi till the first New Testament prophet, John the Baptist, There had been 400 years with no prophet in Israel. So seeing the prophet John the Baptist show up on the scene was big news in Israel. However, John the Baptist declaring Jesus is the Messiah was even bigger news. And when Jesus began to perform miracles, it was a confirmation of who he is. And the miracles begin to tell us why Jesus came. Before Jesus came onto the scene and performed this miracle that we are talking about today, there was 450 years with no recorded miracle. 450 years with no biblically recorded sign or wonder. The last miracle in the Old Testament, most scholars believe, is when Daniel was thrown into the lion's den and God spared his life. So the Israelites seeing this miracle performed by Jesus, it's a big deal. They've been waiting for God to do something amazing for a long, long time. 
They've been waiting a long time for God to send them another prophet or, or to finally send them the Messiah that they've been waiting for. Let me share another thing that's unique about the Gospel of John. The Apostle John only records nine miracles in his Gospel, and he calls them signs. Signs are a miracle that teach us a lesson or teach us a truth about God. They are miracles that reveal Christ's character, power, and glory. John shares these miracles with us not just to amaze us, but to also instruct us. The nine recorded signs in the Gospel of John are Jesus turns water into wine, which is, this, which is the miracle we'll be looking at today. The healing of the nobleman's son. The man who was sick for 38 years and who was by the pool of Bethsaida. The feeding of the 5,000 with five loaves and two fish. Jesus walking on water and Peter walking on the water. A blind man receiving his sight in John 9. Lazarus being raised back to life in John chapter 11. Jesus rising from the dead and his miraculous appearances to the believers in John chapter 20. And then the miraculous catch of 153 fish in John 21. John tells us that Jesus performed many other miracles. But John mentions these nine for a reason. And he shares that reason in John chapter 20, verses 30 and 31. And it says this, Jesus did many other miraculous signs in his disciples' presence, signs that are not recorded in this scroll. But these things are written so that you will believe that Jesus is the Christ, God's Son, and that believing you will have life in his name. John tells us about these nine miracles so that we will believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, that we will believe that he is the Son of God and that by believing in him we will find life in his powerful name. The very first miracle that Jesus performs takes place at a wedding in Cana. Jesus and his mother and his disciples had been invited to this wedding and they are there to celebrate the marriage of this couple. It's clear that they either underestimated the number of people who would attend this wedding feast, or they underestimated the amount people would drink. And Mary, the mother of Jesus, realizes that they have run out of wine before the festivities have ended, which would, would, which would be a huge embarrassment to the couple and their families. So Mary goes to her son and asks him for help. Jesus tells the servants to fill six giant stone jars with water, each jar able to hold 20 to 30 gallons. The servants fill the jars to the brim, and then Jesus tells them to take these jars to the head, headmaster. When the head waiter receives these jars, they are, they are no longer filled with water, but with excellent tasting wine. The head waiter and most of the people at the wedding don't even know that a miracle has just occurred. But the servants who drew the water and the disciples of Jesus who watched, or who also maybe helped the servants fill the jars, they witnessed a miracle. Something I find interesting is that Jesus' very first miracle is a miracle of transformation. Transformation and change are why Jesus came to this earth. And I believe that is why it was his very first miracle. Jesus came to change the world. He came to convert us from children of darkness to children of the light. He came to transform our lives. This miracle of transforming water into wine is a sign that Jesus came to change things in our world and he came to transform us. When we repent and are baptized for the remission of our sins, we become what the Bible calls born again. Our relationship with God changes from being a creation of God to being a child of God. We receive the Holy Spirit and God begins to change the way we think, the things we do, how we treat others, how we see life. God begins to change us from the inside out. 
Outwardly, we don't look any different. But inwardly, we are changing. God is transforming us. When Jesus performs this miracle, transforming water into wine, notice he does not change the outward vessels. He only changes what is inside the jars. The same is true for us. When we become Christians, nothing on the outside of us changes. We usually look the same, but how we view the world and life has changed. How we think and act has changed. Some people see these changes in us right away and recognize the miracle that God is doing in our lives. But many in the world will never notice that change. Let me ask you, have you ever seen someone come to know Christ and their whole life change? Like I said, they look the same on the outside, but they think and do, what, 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 how they think and what they do and how they live are completely different now, now that Jesus is at the center of their lives. You know, many years ago, there was a movie called To Save a Life that came out, and I really loved this movie. And in this movie, the a really popular kid who was the head point guard, for the basketball team, he becomes a Christian. And he looks the same on the outside, but he's, God is be really beginning to work on, in, in him and through him. He no longer desires to go to the wild parties and drink and sleep around. Instead, his friends see him reading his Bible and going to church and even going to youth group. And his friends actually don't like the change because they want the old person back. But this person has been changed by Jesus Christ and because of that relationship, that relationship changes everything. And his kid's even willing to be persecuted at his school for the cause of Christ. He just wants to, to be in a relationship with God and do the right thing. Second Corinthians 5.17 talks about this change. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. I pray all of us experience that life transformation, that change, that we all enter into that personal saving relationship with Jesus Christ that changes us from the inside out. Another interesting thing about this miracle is that not everyone realizes a miracle has just happened. Many who attended the wedding didn't even know a miracle had occurred in their presence. The scriptures tell us that the headmaster tasted the wine from the jars and found it to be really good wine. But he did not know that the wine was water just a few minutes ago. Only the servants who filled those jars and the disciples of Jesus and his mother knew what had happened. I believe this still happens today. God is still working miracles in people's lives and in our world. But many are so busy just enjoying their life or trying to survive life that they do, that they do not recognize the miracles that God is doing around them. Only a few and observant people appreciate those hidden miracles of God. For example, when a child is born, do you stand in awe and wonder at the miracle of life? Or when someone who is sick is healed through modern-day medicine or through the hand of God, do we, do we recognize God's hand in that situation and that healing? Or when we are struggling financially and then some unexpected income comes our way, do we recognize the hand of God in that? In today's miracle, only the servants of Jesus, or only the servants and Jesus' disciples and his mother knew a miracle had just occurred. I want to encourage you to look for God's handwork, handiwork. Look for how God is working in our world. Look for those little miracles that God is performing. And give thanks and praise to him when you see it. The next thing I want you to notice in this story is that the servants obeyed with zeal. They didn't just fill those jars partially with water. 
They filled those jars to the brim. You know, a lot of what happens in the church and in the world is done half-heartedly, isn't it? Many people don't do their jobs to the best of their abilities. They do enough just to get by. And many of us do our jobs and our chores reluctantly or with a lot of complaining. Notice that these servants are asked to do something that doesn't seem to solve the lack of wine problem. Yet they do it willingly and without complaining. Think about this. These servants are here working a wedding. And the problem is is that they are running out of wine. And Mary asks Jesus to help solve this problem. And then Jesus tells the servants to go fill these six giant jars with water. Each jar could hold 20 to 30 gallons, the scriptures tell us. These servants have to be thinking, Jesus, we have plenty of water. How is this going to help solve the shortage of the wine problem? Yet the servants take these heavy stone jars to the well, and they fill them to the brim. And if you think about this, if there's a two-gallon bucket hooked to that well, that's lowering that bucket 75 times, filling it and lifting a heavy bucket up 75 times, filling these stone jars about 150 gallons, and then carrying these heavy jars back to the party. This is a, big, a pretty big job, a labor, labor-intensive job. This command by Jesus did not make sense. It seemed ridiculous. It seemed laborious. And if these servants regularly helped at weddings, it could ruin their careers as they were to find more wine, not more water. Yet they obeyed Jesus and filled the jars to the brim. And I believe as they carried that water to the headmaster, Jesus turned it into wine. And even though it was labor-intensive, and even though obedience to Jesus could lead to them looking foolish, they obeyed, and it resulted in a miracle. On the servant's part, it took faith and obedience. You know, sometimes we have to do the ridiculous before God will do the miraculous. We must obey even if it does not make sense. Our job is to obey and to do it zealously and, and to fill it to the brim, whatever the task is. Do it with zeal and do it with excellence. Once we obey, the miracle part is up to God. We draw the water, he turns it to wine. We throw the nets, he fills them with fish. We walk around the city, and he brings the walls tumbling down. You know, we could use more people in the church like these servants. We could use more people in this world who have this attitude that Jesus commands it, and I'm going to do it. Even if it requires a lot of labor, if it doesn't make a lot of sense to me right now, I, Jesus says it and I'm just going to obey it. And I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. So if we're told to believe, then let us believe wholeheartedly. If we are called to preach, then we should do it to the best of our ability, trusting God's power and truth to work in us and through us. If we are called to teach, then we ought to teach to the best of our ability. If we are told to pray, then let us pray mightily. And if you are told to study and grow in your faith, then turn the scriptures inside out and lay hold of those truths that are contained in God's holy word and, and, and study them and, and like your life depended on it. And if you are to, told to give, then give generously and do it with joy and enthusiasm. Notice that because the servants obeyed Jesus' commands and because they wholeheartedly did what Jesus asked them to do, a miracle occurred. And there was plenty of wine to be enjoyed by everyone at the wedding. Something else I want to point out to you. This miracle of transformation was accomplished by Jesus' word, by by Jesus' words, and by his servants, or by servants. The same is true today. God wants to transform the world by the power of his word. 
And the task of transforming the world is to be carried out by His Spirit-filled servants. May we as servants of God share the Word of God with the world in hopes that they may receive Jesus Christ. And let's be honest, these servants who filled these jars with water, they were flawed human beings. Yet no one rejected the wine because of their weakness or their failings. Friends, we can't wait till we are perfect to offer the world the new wine, Jesus Christ. Rather, as flawed and forgiven followers of God, we offer Jesus Christ and his love to the world in hopes that they will receive him. And let me just say this to all of you that are out in this world who do not know Jesus Christ. Please don't reject the gospel message because of the humanity and the imperfections of the vessels who bring you that good news. My inconsistencies do not negate the truth of God's holy word. My imperfections do not negate the perfect sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross and all that he did to save you. Don't let my flaws or any other believer's flaws keep you from a personal saving relationship with Jesus Christ. Let me put it another way. Imagine that you are hopelessly lost in a desert. And you've been wandering around the desert for days. And you realize that if you don't get some water and you don't get out of this desert soon, you are going to die. And then a few minutes later, this jeep comes flying over the sand dunes. And and this big dude who's got long, greasy hair and a long, unkept beard gets gets out of the jeep. He's wearing some weird clothes, and he doesn't smell that great. He's sunburned and all sweaty and gross. But he gets out of that Jeep, and he says, Hey, you want some water? Do you need a lift out of here? Do you need a ride? Do you reject the water and the ride because you don't like the way this person looks? And then you die in the desert? Or do you take that water, and you take that ride, and you live? It's the same as us. If you don't know Jesus Christ and you have a friend or a co-worker, yeah, he may not be perfect or she may not be perfect, but if she shares the word of God, you don't reject the message, don't reject the gospel because you don't like everything about the messenger. Friends, there is not a minister of God or a follower of Christ out there that doesn't have flaws. And let's be honest, it's easy to find faults in people, isn't it? And maybe you've been turned off to God in the church because of some Christians you know. Or maybe someone tried to share Jesus with you and they weren't very good at it or you weren't impressed by some of their life choices. Don't reject the message just because the messenger is disappointing. Listen to me. The gospel message is true. God's love for you is real. Don't let any flawed human being come between you and God and eternal life in heaven. Don't reject the message because you're not impressed with the messenger. Let me share another truth I, I hope you realize from this miracle of water turning to wine. is Jesus transforms us into something better. In today's scripture passage, the head waiter says, everyone puts out the good wine first, and then when people have had some to drink, they put out the inferior wine. But you have saved the best for last. This transformed wine is better than the wine that was served earlier, and it is definitely better than the water that was originally put into the jars. Before our lives were changed by Jesus Christ, we were like that bland, tasteless water. But when we, when we repent, we are changed and we turn to that sparkling, full of flavor and zest drink that we call wine. May we all realize that the Christian life is better than the non-Christian life. Our days with Jesus are better than our unsaved days without him. A preacher named Bayless Conley says, The best I had unsaved does not compare with the life I have now as a follower of Jesus. 
My old life was much inferior in every way, and I wouldn't go back for any price. I hope you feel that way too. I hope we feel that our life with Christ is far better than our life before Christ. I know I feel that way. Something else I want you to notice is Jesus didn't charge for the transformed wine. Salvation and transformation are a free gift from God that we should gratefully receive and enjoy. You know, Jesus could have charged lots of money for this excellent tasting wine, but he gave it freely to everyone at the party. And Jesus could make it very expensive to find salvation and inherit eternal life in heaven, but he chooses to freely offer us salvation and eternal life. The gift of salvation is free to everyone who will receive it. And I hope all of us take hold of that gift. Finally, let me point out one last truth to you. In order for this miracle of transformation to happen, you have to do what this wedding couple did. They invited Jesus. Jesus did not crash this party. He was not an unwanted guest. He was invited to the wedding and he brought transformation. The same is true of us. Jesus comes into our lives and our circumstances by invitation only. Have you invited him into your life and into your situations? Has Jesus transformed your life into something better? Friends, if you want a better life, if you want a better future, if you want to experience the saving and transforming power of Jesus Christ, you have to invite Jesus Christ into your life. Jesus transformed water into wine, and Jesus wants to transform our lives from ordinary to extraordinary. But Jesus won't force anyone to love him. He won't force anyone to be saved that doesn't want to be saved. He won't change your life unless you ask him to. You want a better life on earth and a better life when you die and go to the afterlife? Then invite Jesus into your life. Receive him as your Lord and Savior and allow him to transform you into a beautiful child of God. My friends, Jesus transformed water into wine. He wants to transform your life too. The question today is, is will you let him? Will you invite Jesus into your life and allow him to make your life better? Let's pray. Jesus, we are grateful that you are a God who has changed our world, who wants to transform our lives. In this miracle where you transformed water into wine, we get an idea of why you came. You came to transform us from bland, tasteless water into zesty, zesty, tasteful wine. And I pray, God, that all of us would invite you into our lives, invite you into our situations and our circumstances and our problems, our struggles, and that you would begin to change us as we invite you into our hearts and into our lives. And as we repent of our sins, God, change us from the inside out. Make us into children of God that are dearly loved by you. Bring your light, your truth, your hope, your peace into our lives. And then may we, as your servants, go and take Jesus into the world, take the word of God into the world, sharing it with everybody in our sphere of influence so they might come to know Jesus Christ as well. We pray this in your holy, precious name. Amen. Now's the time in the service when we take up our tithes and offerings. And I just want to say, as a Christian, we are called to tell other people about the transformation that they can experience, right? We experience this transformation and we want everyone else to experience it because it's the best thing in the world. And you don't have to be someone who comes up here and talks about it to spread that word. You don't have to be someone who works at a church who... Um, volunteers in certain ministries. There are so many different ways to spread God's word, and we're all called to do that differently. 
And one of those ways that you can do that is just by giving to the church. Without your tithes, without your offerings, our ministries could not do what they do, and they couldn't reach certain people. And so that's why we take time to do this. That's why we ask for an offering. And so there are so many different ways you can give, and those are found on the screen. But as we um, listen to this next song in the service, we ask that you reflect on that and listen to what the Spirit might be asking you to give today. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for another Sunday. We thank you that it's another day that we come to learn about you and to worship you. And it's another day that we go home and take a day to just be in your presence, remember all the good things that you have done for us. And we thank you for speaking through Pastor Dan. And thank you for these gifts and offerings um, given by so many generous hearts. And we ask that you bless them and you bless every single penny that has been given in the offering today and that it goes for your kingdom and your glory. And it goes so that people can experience the transformation that we have experienced. And we thank you that we are able to experience that. So we love you and we praise you and we bless all. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. We're going to sing one last song together, Fourth in Thy Name, O Lord, which is number 438 in your hymnal, or you can follow along on the screens. So let's continue to worship together.
Well, I want to thank you for worshiping again with us today. And I'd like, if we could, could we give a round of applause to Karen and to Rachel for offering their gifts and their talents to us today? Really appreciate that. I want to remind you there are snacks and refreshments in the fellowship hall. We hope you'll come back and join us for the food and the fellowship. Till we meet again, may God's grace and his power and love fill you. And may you share his good news with those around you. And may we be like those servants. And may we just faithfully follow the Lord and obey his commands all the days of our lives. Go in God's power and grace. Amen. Still meeting after church? <laughs>